In this video, we'll go over the answer to question 14 of the 2021 New South Wales HSC chemistry exam. The question states, a sample of nickel was dissolved in nitric acid to produce a solution with a volume of 15 milliliters. 10 milliliters of the solution was then diluted to 250 milliliters. This solution was subject to colometric analysis. A calibration curve for this analysis is given. This is then followed by the calibration curve showing the relationship between the absorbance and concentration. Then we have the statement, the solution gave an absorbance value of 0 0.30. The question then asks, what was the mass of the sample of nickel? Followed by four options between 0 0.0021 and 0 0.15 grams. To answer this question, we use the absorbance value of 0 0.30 together with the calibration curve to determine the concentration. We can see the absorbance of 0 0.30 meets the line at just beyond 0 0.002 moles per liter. So let's use 0 0.002 moles per liter as our figure for the concentration. We need to remember that this is the concentration of the diluted solution. The original solution, which had the nickel sample dissolved in it, was diluted in the process. To calculate the dilution factor, we divide the diluted solution volume by the original solution volume. In other words, 250 divided by 10, which gives us a dilution factor of 25. Therefore, the original concentration is just 0.002 multiplied by 25, giving us 0.05 moles per liter. The original solution was 50 milliliters, so to find the total number of moles of nickel in the sample, we multiply the volume, 0.05 liters, by the concentration, 0.05 moles per liter, giving us 0.0025 moles. We now have what we need. Number of moles of nickel is 0.025. Looking at the reference periodic table, we get the molar mass of nickel, which is 58.69 grams per mole. So finally, to get the mass of the nickel, we multiply the number of moles by the molar mass, which gives us 0.15 grams. Looking back at our four options, this means that option D is the answer. To understand this all a little better, let's go through the steps in the process visually and also expand upon the steps we took to calculate the final answer. Firstly, the question states that we have a sample of nickel. This is dissolved in 50 milliliters of nitric acid, so let's picture that. Here is our acid, and we dissolve the nickel in it. Once completely dissolved, we are left with only nickel ions. Next, we take 10 milliliters of this, which we can visualize with a test tube sample, and then dilute to make a 250 milliliter sample. In other words, the 10 milliliter sample is completely transferred to the large beaker and then filled with pure water to reach 250 milliliters. This is the sample that was used for the colometric analysis and what the absorbance value refers to. Next, Let's look a little closer at some of the calculation steps we took to get to the answer. Firstly, as we said on the previous slide, it was the diluted solution that was actually run through the colometric analysis. So it is the concentration of this that we determine when we look at the calibration curve. Using the curve, we determine this to be 0.002 moles per liter. We said the original solution was diluted. Therefore, to calculate the original solution's concentration, we determine the dilution factor. The dilution factor is the value we need to multiply the diluted concentration by in order to get the original concentration. To get the dilution factor, we divide the volume of the diluted solution by the volume of the original, more concentrated solution. This value will always be greater than one as the diluted volume is larger than the original. Multiplying this by the diluted concentration is what gave us the original solution's concentration. Another way to calculate this is to use the formula C1V1 is equal to C2V2, where one and two are the two solutions. It doesn't matter which you label the diluted and which the original, so long as you are consistent. If we say one is the dilute solution, we can plug in the values we know from the question and then solve for C2, or the concentration of the original solution. Rearranging and solving, we get the same result, 0.05 moles per liter. We next use the volume of the original solution, 50 milliliters, but convert it to liters without showing the working. Here, we can see that in a bit more detail. We know that 1000 milliliters is one liter, which means one milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. Therefore, 50 milliliters to liters is just 50 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0.05 liters. We then calculated the number of moles by multiplying the volume by the concentration. This comes about when using the equation on the formula sheet, calculating concentration C is equal to N on V. Rearranging this equation enables us to determine an equation for the number of moles, done by multiplying each side by the volume. With the concentration of the solution being 0.05 moles per liter, and the volume 0.05 liters, we can multiply these two to get to the answer. And this is what we did in order to calculate that we had 0.0025 moles. 
with 0.0025 moles of nickel and the molar mass of nickel, we calculate the mass of the nickel sample was 0.15 grams. To see how we got there, we can again look at the formula sheet to find a relevant formula, this time for the number of moles, which is n is equal to mass on molar mass. This can be rearranged to make mass the subject of the formula by multiplying each side by the molar mass. Plugging in the values, we get 0.15 grams, and therefore d as our final answer. And here we just bring it all back to summarize what we talked about. For this video, the following references were used. Shell and Hogan have a section on colorimetry and go over calibration curves like we see in the question. The B-Lambert law is also stated, which describes the linear relationship between absorbance and concentration. In Blackman et al., we can see this law expressed in a mathematical formula, linking the absorbance and concentration via the length of the path that light travels and an absorption coefficient or value. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.